in meditation, I would just kind of hear people, see people, and I didn't know what it was. So I've been practicing professionally um, the psychic mediumship portion of what I do and also the metaphysical and spiritual healing sessions, was, which also can incorporate grief work, trauma healing, um, intuitive pieces, psychic work, and um, pretty much the whole conglomerate. What is a medium? Medium, noun, Latin, meaning middle, something intermediate, an intervening thing through which a force acts, a person through whom messages are sent to the living from the dead. I was curious myself, so I decided to take a look. Mediums have been with us since biblical times. In fact, the entire Bible is the result of mediums. While some may think the Bible was written by God himself, sitting down at his laptop in one gigantic belch, in fact, it is actually a composite of many books by many writers over many centuries, each of which was divinely inspired to put down in writing what he understood but was interpreted by the spirits he felt he was in contact with. Mediumship, as far as we know, even predates writing, as the mediums of those days were talking to gods and ancestral spirits as they knew them. The mediums were the shamans and witch doctors of the time. People have never stopped talking to spirits and ancestors, they just haven't included any more in the Bible and it seems only special people are gifted enough with the eyes and ears to contact the beyond. As it turns out, if you Google who's a medium in your neighborhood, a whole lot of people show up. Apparently this is more common than one might suppose. I have uh, a degree in um, medical laboratory science so I am very, you know, kind of Western mind as far as medicine, but also, you know, I kind of dabble with alternative healing. So I wanted something that can kind of complement um, each other and more of a spiritual uh, piece to my um, healing. These meditation circles, I would often give messages to those of people that have passed away in, in these study courses, which I also had no idea what it was doing. So. Fast forward, um, I kind of worked with some friends. They had me, you know, I was reading them. They pushed me to get a website up. I did that. I am a psychic medium. I also am a Reiki master teacher. I am a certified angel card reader. I'm a medicinal aromatherapist. I um, was in corporate for nearly 20 years and I primarily sold. So I was in sales for a very long period of time. I'd say that when I was younger, in my, probably in my teens, my connections were always very angelic and I could feel angels. And there was a death in the family when I was in my 20s, my stepbrother passed. And it was at that time that I started to feel his presence, sense his presence around me, and I could actually, it was kind of interesting, smell great jelly, and I knew that that was him and that he was around me. And that really kind of opened me up to understanding that I sensed more than just the angelic realm around me. I've had an ability to connect with people who have crossed over um, to the other side, to heaven, to whatever you um, know about, um, passings of our loved ones and where they go, I'm able to connect with them on a spiritual level. And how I do that is that I'm able to see spirit, hear spirit, and um, feel spirit. So I, I connect with spirit in three different ways. It's something that I was born with. Um, I was able to see, hear, and feel spirit um, since, since I could remember really what this journey has brought me um, to this point is a lot of fulfillment and a lot of um, knowing that there is more to this physical experience that we're living now. I was always able to see and sense spirits and communicate to some extent, although I had no idea what I was doing. That started when I was about three or four. Um, and it wasn't until I got into my late teen years that it became to be more purposeful. Um, I started to hear one of my guides and 
um, really kept that to myself for a number of years. And then probably almost 10 years ago, I, as I like to say, I got pushed out of the spiritual closet um, and I started being more open with um, exploring this kind of thing with working with people I didn't know before that I'd always kept it very close to home. Um, so I started out doing uh, spirit guide readings, communicating with spirit guides, helping people to know and learn and work with their spirit guides, which evolved into mediumship. Um, just kind of on its own, uh, departed loved ones started coming through. And then that's moved into uh, more of healing work. I was adopted as an infant. The family that raised me, I was told by a psychic I went to an intuition class, which was not an intuition class. But anyway, I went to that back in the day before people called themselves psychic. They called it intuition classes. When I walked in this place, like, I've been waiting for you to get here, Jennifer. <laughs> I'm like, it's an intuition class. What do you mean, right? And then she said, um, you, were, you were placed into the family that you were, you were raised with because the family that you were born into would not have accepted your gifts. And I'm like, see you later. And I went and smoked more cigarettes. So, um, but really that is what happened. And, and the, my birth family, now that I know them, they were very, very Catholic and have been very difficult. And so my grandmother in her death and she was close to 90 at the time she did admit to me that she has been able to see spirit but never told anybody my mother as she watches me in shows now or gigs right she um she says she she now knows that she has that ability too but could never admit that either um so it's quite interesting that me stepping out in my generation has helped above generations of me accept who they are too and so my dad that raised me though he was in a assisted living and I was a little afraid to tell him you know Catholic and I'm like dad you know I've kind of been doing this thing he's like what now Jennifer I think I've kind of had this thing my whole life and I I can hear dead people <laughs> and he said oh honey you've always been different <laughs> what do you mean dad oh yeah you could do that since you were little we just didn't want to tell you and he's like I got some friends here that need you. Come over, let's call the smoking area together with his oxygen tank and his wheelchair. <laughs> and he picked me out in the nursing home um, smoking area. She can talk to your daughter. I know you miss your daughter. Go ahead, show them what you can do, Jennifer. <laughs> True story. Every Tuesday I went to the assisted living with my cigarettes and I read the smoking area. <laughs> Our guest today is my very special friend, Pret Tiaras, and Pret is a psychic and a medium. It runs in the family. So my mom was the first person who actually encouraged any kind of belief in mysticism, the occult, anything like that, because my mom is also a medium herself. Um, she does communicate with spirits who have passed on, um, as was my grandmother. So when I was eight, she was like, here, take this deck of tarot cards and see where it goes. And that's how I got started. So I grew up in that environment. So this has been nurtured since childhood. Haunted houses are the usual fodder for TV psychics and paranormal investigators, but I wanted to take a different approach. I had long wanted to take someone with supposed supernatural sensitivity to two different ancient sites near my home, both of which I had previously photographed in another documentary and both of which are known to be spiritual centers of some sort. The first we visited was Lizard Mound, an ancient sacred site and part graveyard, and I asked whoever was nuts enough to take a walk with me through its pathways. I found someone. So what I get is there's this duality. Um, there is the spirits of the land, which is very, very peaceful and magnetic, and then I get what I'm just calling the other thing. If you want to connect to the spirits of the land, you can, and they're here for that. But there's also been other activities here that they're kind of like distancing themselves from. And I'm getting, I'm hearing the phrase, the light show. So the phenomena, something like that. What I'm being told by um, the spirits of the land is that the light show, the other phenomena, that may have been 
kind of pulled here by, I don't know if it's been people who have been doing activities here, like trying to excite the paranormal or try to bring on things or, but I'm getting like, that's not us. This other feeling that I, that I feel like being very drawn to the, the mounds, I get like this, like their, their intent is very pure and they want to help people leave things here and transmute them and it's a very cleansing and grounding place but I keep going but that's us and then there's this other thing so the other phenomena is not is not them um, they're very quiet they have a lot of love and a lot of healing for people but you have to come to them with like a pure intent like if you come here to heal to be at peace with nature they're very accessible but sometimes people don't come here for that they come here for the phenomenon like I said I don't, I don't know what that is you're welcome to walk around and be here and we will show you things and tell you things now I'm getting a sense of the other thing that's going on here that the duality and this other aspect is we were walking here it's almost as like I could hear laughing and I almost felt like people were like coming out or energy behind trees like popping out like jumping up and it was more poltergeisty I don't know what else to call it except it's not this is not whimsical like hey let's have fun and play hide and seek this is kind of more trickster like um, it's kind of like the kids that go into the cemetery late at night and drink and <laughs> Um, it, there's, it's a very, yeah, so much so that before I leave here, I'm probably going to like cleanse my energy because I don't want to take any of it home. I don't, I don't feel it too sticky, but, and, and that is, I get, this is separate. You know, you can have a place that people think is haunted mm -hmm. and they can go and they can like try to call up spirits and do activity and they're gonna, they can attract spirits, but not necessarily spirits that are really of that place. And that's kind of what I feel like is going on here. Do you sense any kind of cultural difference? The thing I do get is over there that's very like with the land and very, very old and very, so I would say that's, maybe more Native American, I would guess. I just felt like the spirits of the land, very rooted in the land. This kind of feels like we came in, we came in, we came in here. And they stay kind of like, I felt them more when we came over here, more on the outskirts. I don't feel them so much over by, that was a mound that we were by, right? Yep. I don't feel them so much over there. It's almost like they know, but they might poke around the edges of it, but they're not gonna go there. Cause they kind of know like, yeah, we can't go into that circle or we can't go into this area, but the outskirts they definitely definitely hang out there and it's almost like they're kind of mocking or teasing like I kind of get like I'm not touching you I'm not touching you am I bothering you kind of thing um, how are they reacting to us or are they just interacting with each other my guy said they think it's kind of funny like, um, if we were kind of hoping that maybe we were a different kind of investigation, that m we might be looking for paranormal activity, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And they would welcome that. They would really jump on that and get even more involved. But, um, I'm being told by my guide that we actually have a mixture of people. We have some spirits that have been here for a while that I get some like kind of anger. They really anger about whoever was here. Uh, but a lot of it has been just kind of attracted and it's really turned into like a, uh, like a mix, like a party, like a free for all. I mean, not that the land is overtaken by them, but I mean, it's a whole different kind of, it's a whole bunch of things because I get here people coming and doing, do they do paranormal like investigations here or something? That I don't know. But it's like one attracts another one, attracts another one. If someone did come here to do actually like paranormal research to really like try to get, um, try to do things to stir up 
pedometer, it would be very easy to get one of these stuck to you and take it home. They're, they're just kind of, some of them are just really kind of looking for a good time, I guess. I meditate every day. I have been over the last three years. I haven't missed a single day. And what that does is it helps um, calm my mind and gets me in a place of stillness. So when I'm doing a reading, I have to um, calm my mind and bring myself to a place of stillness so I'm able to hear spirit, feel, feel spirit, and see spirit. Um, so that's a technique that I use. Um, it's also just a way of living too, just staying healthy, eating healthy, um, you know, exercising, keeping myself in a good state of mind also helps with the readings as well. How much do you do per day? About 30 minutes, 30 minutes to an hour roughly. When I was living in Mantuak, I would see two to three people a week. Um, and some weeks varied. Sometimes I would see 10 people, other weeks I would see none. So it wasn't, I didn't have like a very consistent schedule. What was uh, the initial reaction from like your family or friends when you started doing this? Uh, pretty strange. It wasn't, um, I went to Catholic school, so it was definitely kind of frowned upon. And I did have an experience when I was in second grade. Um, with my music teacher um, and that had sent me to the principal's office and she was a sister and um, it was definitely a, a thing where I was connecting with two of the children of my music teacher and she got very upset with that and um, I was pretty much sent home and my parents heard a lot about that too. My family um, was very accepting of it. Um, but in the beginning was very confused as to how I knew um, about loved ones who have died before I was even born, stuff going on in their lives that I could validate to them. Um, so they were kind of like confused and awestruck by it, but over time um, it was definitely known that this is a gift and this is an ability and that I have to go out and pursue this because it, um, it's something that fulfilled me and made me happy um, learning more about it. My mom's side of the family definitely had some psychic abilities going on. Um, my great great aunt um, did psychic readings. My uh, great grandmother was a psychic in Italy. Um, my grandmother, her daughter, um, did uh, tea leaf readings, which is a form of um, tapping into psychic intuition with people and my mom was definitely open to the subject too, and she does shamanic healing and stuff like that. So it's very um, accepted on my mom's side of the family, but um, wasn't my mom wasn't practicing this when I was younger. She wasn't really didn't know much about this until these experiences really started um, coming to fruition with me, and that opened her up to her abilities as well as a healer. It's kind of how I sense the energy. So. I, it was really where I started to trust what I was getting because I had to wait a lot of times for people to um, tell me what I, what I felt was, was real. So I can see my mind's eye, um, I can sense the energy, I'm more clairvoyant and clairaudient and I was also empathic. So um, I kind of put it all together and I can sense and I'm kind of pulled in that direction what, where I need to go and then I can see kind of what happened there. I did one where I think they couldn't sell their home, there was something going on and when I got there I could see the guy, um, a young 21 year old looking gentleman, um, you know, uh, stonewashed jeans, about six feet tall, white t-shirt and he basically said what are you doing here with some explicit language. And I looked at the the renter or owner, and I said, um, "You have a you know a 21 year old that that hung himself." And she said, "How do you know that?" I said, "Because he's standing right here." So that's really where my platform was to get me going and to really start trusting. Um, you you really gotta do it enough times to know what your senses are, what your connections are how you are attuned to it, how they're finding you. I don't see them in full body apparitions. Okay. Um, I generally see them clairvoyantly in my third eye when I close my eyes. Um, spirits will also appear in glasses of water and in candle flames. Oh. Um, any spirit that comes through clairaudiently, I don't hear what they sound like. All I can hear is my own spirit guide talking to me, telling me what they're saying.
So it's not like in the movies where the person goes under trance and starts to talk in a different voice. There are some people who are trans mediums, right. um, but that's a dangerous, dangerous occupation because you never know if that spirit is going to disengage. I had a lot, very rarely did I sleep when I was younger. I was always kind of bombarded by spirit. Um, so it was a process of learning how to kind of turn it off and tune out from it. Um, so it wasn't so much of a thing where I had to really, really work hard on developing the ability. It was more of a thing that I had to like turn it off so I wasn't just, you know, feeling spirit, seeing spirit all the time. Um, every once in a while now, I will wake up from spirit in my room or I will feel something if I'm in a hotel somewhere. I may pick up on something, but very rarely do I, I now, but it, it does happen from time to time. Clear audience, there's clairvoyance clairsentience, um, basically feeling, hearing, and seeing. Correct. Do you have, what is, what affects you the most, or what comes up first for you? Or so, that? what I share with people um, is that we all have these, what we call the internal senses, the internal sixth sense, okay? So, what we do is we kind of learn by our primary connection, which is what we do in everyday life. So when you were in school, did you remember seeing something or hearing the way things were presented to you? So for me, clairvoyant was uh, is my primary way of connecting. So that is my most natural ability. As I become more attuned to it, I am brought in more pieces to kind of build on. So clairvoyant, I hear clairaudient, um, clairsentient, um, you know, all of that kind of comes together. So you really want to get into the feeling of the energy. Now, mind you, when we are tapped in, we are raising our vibration. So we are moving up through the brain waves. So in beta, which is what we are doing now, speaking, um, we are working at four, uh, 21 to 14 cycles per second. When we are in a meditative state or connecting to our higher self, to intuition, to gut feelings, we are working more into um, our alpha theta, which so our alpha would be um, uh, 14 to seven cycles per second, and theta would be a little bit higher at seven to um, four cycles per second, uh, or lower, I can't remember the exact numbers, but you're basically lowering your brain waves to allow for that meditative state that linear activity to kind of come in, that mundane, not paying attention to anything, and that's where you're drawing from the energy. So you have to be in that enough times and know what that feels like to make sure that you're kind of in that flow with your client or um, with you know something that you're sensing. So when you get enough yeses or noes, you kind of know what I like to say are you, when you're tapped in and you're tapped out. So it takes time, it takes practice. People have to know when they're in their left brain or their right brain. So we work, primarily most people are very analytical, we work in our left brain hemisphere. So bankers, um, finance, you know, any, most of us are in the left brain. So when we get to the spiritual side, um, all those concepts were working in our right brain hemisphere. That's where everything comes from. So most people don't know how to go from left to right. So I kind of help them with the bridge of what's going on. So you kind of have to understand both on how to get there. I'm again mind body spirit connection, metaphysical and spiritual practices. So being very science based myself, very western medicine, I um, like to give people the concept of using, um, you know, spiritual practice practices, psychology, human um, connection, so that we better grasp the concept of being one with the universe and really kind of know where we are in this reality and how to connect to the other side. But we first have to be within our body um, and know where we are here in order to move up. What kind of impressions do you get? Do you get uh... Is it more visual? Is it more auditory? Is it uh, more of a physical sensation? Um, all three of them. They come at me pretty much all at once, and it's almost like it's all being downloaded on me at one point. Um, so I will hear spirit, not like I hear voices, but I'll hear a thought in my head. Um, I'll also see spirit, 
not so much like I see you or um, like a person physically standing in front of me, but it's definitely more of a daydream. Um, so it's very much like I'm, when you're having like a daydream experience, you're very off in this daydream and you can see everything that's happening when you're having this daydream for like normal people. Um, and you're not consciously really aware of what's going on around you. Um, so for me, when I see things, it's I'm having that daydream uh, feel experience, but I'm fully conscious of and aware of what's happening in front of me. So it's like I'm having almost like two thoughts, two experiences at the same time. And I will feel spirit too. If, um, if a loved one passed from a heart attack, I will feel my heart. I will get chest pains. Um, if they had like back problems, if you know, if they had dementia, or Alzheimer's, or something with their head, I will definitely feel sensations um, in the physical location in their body, wherever they pass from. Yeah, I could see someone in a tree hung, one said in the back. I felt it more as maybe like a, you know, just an image of something that happened. I saw a lot of, this feels like a pretty long time ago, because it feels kind of like, um, individuals doing this um, more than actually a lawful thing. Now this area used to extend much farther but as you can see there's farmland right over here mm -hmm. and that area was all cleared probably around the middle of the 19th century. So this used to be a much yeah. bigger space that I, was set aside for... Yeah, I'm getting somebody being blamed for like stealing or something like that. I don't even, and I don't, I don't even think he did it, but it was a younger man, teenager. Get any sense of how they were dressed or um, what language they spoke or anything like that? Yeah, he's, um, he's African American, but I'm getting like a sense of like, I can hear his voice, but it's more like maybe some connection to like New Orleans or something but then it's I don't know his family came from somewhere else but I'm getting this like in his spirit he's like but he and now I can see him he's at the news around his neck he's just walking around and just saying that um in his yeah he's got this accent because he, he's saying please help me ma'am but he's saying it with this accent kind of white shirt on with it's not it's like hooks or something like all the way down the front and he's telling me he didn't do it um it happened very quickly but he was here i get i see his family like came here to 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 work i feel like they came as a family i don't it feels more like a decision to do that so i don't necessarily feel like it was He's saying he wasn't he wasn't the slave, but he came here with his family from the south. Things weren't going well, and then there was something that that was disappeared. He was blamed for it. He didn't do it. He keeps saying I didn't do it. I didn't do it. I'm just asking for my guides to help move him on because he's very mm. clearly looking for. Um, he's also carrying a lantern, so it's possible, and I can see like he's made an impression on the land, so. That may be one thing people have seen here, is, his, is a light or something. The more modern craze for spiritualism, or spiritism as it's sometimes called, began in 1848 with Maggie and Kate Fox, sisters in upstate New York, who began to hear knocking in their bedroom late one night. They soon became known as mediums, people who can talk to the dead. The guidance of their older sister, Leah, became stars in the world of mediumship and ignited a craze across the continent and in Europe for seances and mediums speaking to the dead. Among them were such famous personalities as Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, H.G. Wells, Victor Hugo, and among the skeptics and naysayers, was Harry Houdini. Doyle was so taken with it that he even wrote a history on spiritualism up to the point where he got involved in it. Victor Hugo also left an unpublished manuscript of his seance sessions that took place 
while he was an exile from France. People began to crawl out of the woodwork to attend seances, and mediums started to accumulate. Often this led to charlatanism, and a whole array of tools and contraptions were created to assist the medium in speaking to the dead. Houdini's point that so many of these gimmicks could be faked led him to take his skeptical stance. And who better to justify that than someone who had been mystifying audiences through trickery for years. Angel energy for me is incredibly special. And it's a different kind of energy than doing mediumship. And angel energy is light and it's airy and it's loving. And it's just that energy that you would want to bathe in if you could. And hearing and seeing angels, for me specifically, I work with the, a lot of the archangels and their Archangel Michael is specifically someone I work with, many of us do, um, because he's there to help guide us and protect us and really help us when we're moving forward in our, in our own life's path and our life's journey. So for me, angels have become very special to me and when they come into my space or you know, if I'm working with clients for Reiki and healing sessions, I know who's here, I know how they feel energetically, how they appear to me, even in my mind's eye, um, and what they're here to help me as well as my client accomplish in their spiritual journey. So the angels for me um, are like a warm, loving blanket that is with me all the time, and I love sharing that energy and helping people understand who their guardian angels are and what the angels do for us and the signs that they give us. And I still thrive from seeing uh, signs from my angels because you know I'm not like, unlike everybody else where I like to see signs and hear from them as well. And through meditation and prayer daily, um, that's how I really do my part in, in staying connected to them. You weren't necessarily planning to graduate from college and then go into mediumship. You were planning on doing something else, I would assume. I do have a very strong health background um, in, in lab medicine. I've been doing that for 30 years. So uh, the psychic, the intuition, again, I don't, I don't call myself a medical intuitive, but a lot of my medical knowledge comes in play. Um, I'm very much a, I'm a competitor by nature. Um, so, you know, I, I'm instilled in kind of like the hustle mode all the time of learning and researching and studying. Um, I feel that no matter what you do, you always have to be, um, if you have a passion for it, the top of your game. So, um, I, medicine is my number one. So a lot of that stuff comes through with my clients. If somebody says they have a heart, you know, they pass away of a heart condition. I would like to go a little bit further and say, you know, it's the left ventricle, um, you know, enlarged left ventricle, or maybe they had a stunt that broke, um, something like that. They were in, went in the hospital, they were anemic, um, and later found out that they have a brain tumor, but it first started as anemia. So I kind of use that in the medical aspect. Psychology, um, again, with the death and dying coursework, um, and being in the medical field and also working as, in nursing facility, um, my younger college days, it kind of encompasses everything. So you have to learn where people are in their physical body when they're grieving. And again, it's a very important. Um, if anybody's doing this work, that's why I do not I do not recommend these high priority readings or these emergency type readings because to me the person is deceased. There's no rush, and what. I think happens is the person that is very desperate, they want, again, to make you, you're bringing the awareness, of course, that the spirit, the person is still alive. However, the reality in the physical body is that the, the person has passed. So when we do that sometimes and we don't know the person's medical history or if they may be be bipolar or have some other things going on, we could be triggering or tripping up a complicated grief situation that could be very damaging um, if they do not have professional help. 
What are the kind of requests you get most often? I think for me, most people come in to see me for mediumship and they are really hoping to connect with loved ones who have passed and they really want to know that their loved ones are okay and that they're not upset with them for some reason. That would probably be one of the requests I hear the most as well as wanting to know that their loved ones feel that they're on the right path in their own lives. And Spirit never tells us what to do, but they will absolutely give us guidance and insights on how to be the best version of ourselves and to live a high vibrational life full of peace and joy. And I feel that that's probably what I get from most people when they're coming in. They just want to know their loved ones are okay, that they're at peace, and that maybe some of the challenges that they faced in this life have subsided for them. Any bad sessions? I don't know. I, I think there aren't any bad sessions. I think sometimes energy can be a bit more challenging to work with sometimes. When someone comes in to see me and they're super nervous and they're maybe not open as much as they could be because they are nervous or scared, I do feel that that can sometimes get in the way of having a, a an even better session because I think spirit only gives us what we're ready for and what we can handle. And I think that's great. But when you're not open to receive a lot, you get minimal. Whereas I've seen other readings where you can get more. So it's more about working with energy that can be a little bit challenging. And I sometimes feel that if there's a spirit that had a difficult life or didn't treat people well, that sometimes that energy is, you know, it's in the process of healing and talking about those things for both sides can be a bit challenging and emotional, but we always get through it. Do you use any particular kinds of, uh, well, even if just on occasion, um, tools or devices such as tarot cards or uh, you mentioned tea leaves or any of those kinds of things or uh, scrying in a bowl of water or a ball or anything like that? Um, no, I don't use anything at all really. It's uh, My main thing is the mediumship, so I just, just myself, I just bring me to um, in the, a live show if I'm doing a show. It's just me. If it's a one-on-one, -on -one, a two-person, a group event, it's, yeah, I don't use anything at all really to do it. I also do um, intuitive reading, psychic readings, and it's the same process. Automatic writing, I don't know if I've done that before. I've done psychometry, um, kind of just like practicing, you know, developing my intuition more. I think those tools are great. I think they definitely can um, help people um, tune in with themselves and help see the energy field um, with other people to help them along their journey as well. Um, I don't think it's needed um, for me personally. Have you um, experimented with um, automatic writing or automatic drawing or any of that kind of stuff? Yes, yeah, so I, my mother actually did automatic writings from an angelic source for many, many years and she has notebook upon notebook of these writings. And I can sit down and usually what I'll do is after meditation or if I just feel that spirit wants to talk to me, then I'll sit down and I just write what I'm being told. And I have received a lot of really great information that way. A lot of that information has been for my own personal growth and my own spiritual uh, growth. But there have been times when there have been messages around things going on in life and what a lot of us are experiencing. So I will take that information and share that, whether it's through social media or in some of my blog writing. It just really depends. But a lot of that information, I just sit and you can hardly even understand my handwriting because it goes so fast. I don't type it. I probably should. But I do write and I write very quickly. And typically they'll tell me who they are when we're done writing or I can feel that energy. <clears throat> and for me, it's most of the time an archangel that's coming in and giving me that information um, or a member of my, my spirit team, my spirit guides. Do you have any requests for that at any, uh, from somebody at a session because they want notes? <laughs> or something like that that they don't want to take down they would rather have you write it down no typically I don't allow recording in my sessions so I 
always provide notebooks or and pens and stuff for a client to write down any information that they're receiving. If I have a group, then I encourage someone who is not receiving the messages to write for the person that is receiving those messages. Um, and that typically works really well. But I, for me personally, don't really talk about my angel writings. Um, I don't really publicize that, but as a spiritual being and as a practitioner and a spiritual teacher, um, I do that. And again, in most cases, it's to help me out so that I can then help others. Ouija board. Mm. No, no, no. Um, yeah, the Ouija board is definitely a big no-no. Um, I'm actually surprised that they still sell them. Um, Ouija board should really only be used um, if you are a trained medium because the Ouija board functions as a door. You know, usually there's a planchette mm -hmm. that they have that moves from letter to letter. You never know who you're opening yourself up to. Um, there have been many cases where Ouija boards um, do a bunch of strange things if you try and throw mm -hmm. them out. Um, so, and these are not, you know, they're not fictitious experiences. I have, I know some people myself who the only way to get rid of it was to burn it and bless it because right. they would break the planchette, the planchette would come back together and it'd be appearing on their doorstep the next morning. You know, so these are no joke. Um, you definitely open yourself up to the trickster energies, to whatever energy, you know, to whatever energy or entity is in that area, you know, and they have access to information that we don't. So of course they can tell you that they're your grandma, or of course they can tell you that they're your uncle, but in actuality they're not. Um, and once you put the board away, you've now called that spirit into this world, and they either stay with you, or they wreak havoc other places. Indeed, I would agree. I think uh, unless you know what you're doing, Ouija board is kind of like the equivalent of driving to a bad area of town mm -hmm. and putting a free beer sign on your car. They don't bear any ill will towards anybody. They're very forgiving. And I was hearing something about offerings. And when I say an offering for the land, I mean, you know, either putting out food or drink or just prayers or praying for the land, those kind of offerings. And they were saying that it'd be nice if we had more. However, we understand that the majority of people who come here are not oriented that way to think of that um, and they're also very forgiving about that so they're very very tolerant beings of how we have become in our modern world and how we're not and certainly there are people who come here who are receptive to being thankful to the land and giving to the land. Of course, there's many people here that come like that. They really, they're like, wow, isn't that a nice surprise? It's kind of like how they tell you that you shouldn't expect things from people. When you get it, it should be just a wonderful surprise. And, mm -hmm. and that's how they feel. I mean, there's, I guess I'm just very struck by how understanding and forgiving they are of people and, you know, trying to help and heal people that come here. It's just, it's just really cool. I thought when we first started talking to them, I was going to have to do a lot more kind of like with my guide vetting us, like, it's okay, we're just, you know, if you want to talk or don't want to talk, and they're very, they're very open. I, I feel like that other kind of energy is like way back there, it's so interesting, I could feel it, but it's like way back there, it's like not even a issue, I'm just always kind of aware of where it is. I was just getting like, um, just about, you know, kind of reiterating what they've been saying. But then I was getting, do you want to know anything about, is there a, a spiral here? Well, there is a loop, you know, as far as the trail goes. Yeah. I don't know about a spiral. Oh, uh, okay. I was getting more of like a mark, like a spiral. Are you feeling something on the, like a vortex or something like that, or? Yeah, I just saw the symbol, and so I assumed, I thought well, maybe there's an actual symbol here somewhere, but... This is how the how when they were talking about grounding and cleansing and purifying, it's how they do it. Are the mounds in a like I don't know anything about the mounds here. Are they kinda like No, they're kinda scattered all over. There's okay. no specific pattern as to okay. how they're laid out. I get like a like a maybe it's just where there's I don't know. It's like I get like three and then there's the, but you can access it from anywhere here. It's how the negative energy doesn't stay here. But they keep pulling it out, pulling it out. So. 
This is cool. It's magical. I was really struck by how invested in forgiving the spirits of the land were um, and how willing they were to help people that come here, even people that don't really know what's going on. Um, maybe can feel it in some sense. So whether you're coming here intentionally to heal or you're just coming here to enjoy the land, um, they're very willing to work with everybody. And I thought that was really cool. They're even very tolerant of the other energy that's going on here. And as we're leaving, I was getting the impression like, you know, they're really not a problem. Whoever they are, they're even tolerant of them. So I thought that was really, really beautiful. It, it just put me in mind a very old, wise spirits that kind of understand that um, the younger spirits don't always maybe know <laughs> everything, um, but we're young compared to them. So. I just thought that was really, really cool, and I got a lot of peace, and um, just beautiful. Do you have any sense of how many entities or personalities or spirits or whatever? When we went to the first mound, um, I felt kind of my guide go out as like a representation of us, and then they had a representative come forward, and I felt just... Hundreds, hundreds of spirits um, along those mounds. And I'm also getting like lines of like generations of generations of generations of people who were buried or tended the land or just kept that going. So really kind of, it's more like on a universal level of being invested in what happens to here and this planet. And I really felt that they had a love and a desire to work with beings of the whole of the whole planet that they're doing trying to do work from here for everyone so just an, an immense amount of love so I came here today with open but a lot of respect I did not want to upset any spirits of the land and um, didn't want to exploit anything which I, did, I knew we weren't coming here to do that but I just came in with a lot of like you know we come in peace kind of thing <laughs> um, I was very pleased with the way that it turned out and the information. Most people, are they're, they're open to anything. Um, before I do my sessions, I, um, I have my own ritual that I do. I'm uh, Catholic. Um, went to a Catholic school for, you know, 12 plus years, so it's very um, kind of ingrained in me. So my ritual is I sage, um, I pray, I kind of use my holy water. And I just kind of connect with God and ask for the highest and best of the client. So um, I am very connected to three, the Trinity. So, um, you know, I just feel the, the mind, body, spirit connection in the Trinity. And those in spirit, um, universal source, myself and the client as, as a unity too. So um, it's just kind of I trust what comes forward and within that time frame that we have uh, whatever's meant to come through is is the the most and best um, piece that I can give them so sometimes I am guided to stick on a strong subject that I'm still giving evidential pieces of a mother had that passed or grandmother or a best friend but they're guiding me to stick to a personal core issue or something um, as as the, the sessionary purpose. I assume you've done group sessions. How different mm -hmm. are they from individual? So with group sessions, whether it's a gallery or a spirit circle, there's a lot of energy that for me personally I'm trying to work with. I, I When I do a gallery reading and there's 80 people in the audience, it's like you're an exposed wire grounding yourself, playing air traffic control to all this spirit energy that's coming through. And it's intense. And so that's probably the biggest difference is there's an intensity around a group reading, especially in a gallery. In a small circle setting or in, in a group, especially when it's family, it's almost like there's a family reunion happening because you have several generations of family in the room and a mother and a grandmother and an aunt potentially is coming through to these people 
And it's almost as if they come in and sit down and have a conversation, you know, it, it's quite amazing. So I enjoy doing groups. Um, I do feel that private one-on-one sessions can be a bit more emotional, but this process is emotional for, for many people, regardless of if you're in a group or you're in a private reading. But I think for me, the difference is the amount of energy coming in and really trying to manage that. That's probably the biggest difference. Preparation for a mediumship session is a lot more intense and difficult than a regular session. Um, the whole area has to be prepared. Um, you know the old adage, cleanliness is next to godliness? Mm -hmm. It's true. If your space is in disarray, what you have to do is you have to organize it because energy um, energy kind of gets stuck. You know, it gets stuck in the mess. Mm -hmm. You know, so I try and make sure the area is clean, not only physically, but also mm -hmm. spiritually by either saging or frankincensing to raise the spiritual vibration. Um, and then I also use a combination of different colognes, different spiritual waters to make a very pleasing environment for good energy, good vibrations. Um, spirits tend to respond to fragrance quite, um, they respond to fragrance um, surprisingly well because a sharp citrusy fragrance like a Florida water or a Kananga water will attract good energy but will dispel negative energy. Hmm. Um, I also use a combination of prayers. You know, um, I know it's kind of formulaic, but I generally start with the Catholic prayers and Our Father, mm -hmm. three Hail Marys, the Creed, and then prayers to Archangel Michael, and also to open up the gate for my own ancestors to come through and guide me in the process. Oh. Um, I always feel it's essential to call in someone to function as your guide when you're medium to help you kind of direct the traffic, direct the flow of energy. Because mm -hmm. once you open yourself up, it's like a never-ending highway, you know, so you need someone who's going to direct the traffic and control who can talk to you and who can't. I think people think they're just going to come in for a session and then boom, lay it on you. Yeah. And all of a sudden you're going to tell them what Uncle Harry is doing on the other side. Yeah. Or and where he hid his insurance policy. Absolutely. And that's generally why I request people to tell me in advance, because it takes approximately a half an hour more to mm -hmm. prepare for that kind of a session at the beginning of the day. Um, I also ask that people bring something that was memorabilia or at least state their name. Because if you state their name, if you state their intention, you're going to draw them closer and you're going to draw right. them quicker. Um, and that's why people are like, well, guess. And I'm like, no. Yeah. I'm not going to guess. You're going to tell me who you want to talk to, and then my guide will bring that person forward quickly and efficiently. Right. So it's for the client's benefit, not my own. In meditation every morning, I am clearing my energy, cutting cords, and I then kind of ramp or vibe up my energy into a love space, and then I protect myself. And I personally put a coat of armor on that has flowers on it, because that's what I like. And then I put a protective energetic bubble around myself that goes 10 to 20 feet out. And for me, that's how I protect myself. My prayer and the intention behind that is that I'll be protected throughout the day. And that only, you know, energy of love and life is, the love and light is what's impacting me. Um, I also, uh, at, in my own home, I um, burn sage, Palo Santo, I have some incense, so I will clear my home, I have sprays, and here at the center I'm constantly clearing, but a lot of that is about intention and just knowing that I try to keep myself in a pretty solid high vibration, which then really helps you to draw in that kind of energy to yourself, but I feel that we all have a responsibility to take care of ourselves energetically, I call it energetic hygiene, and so it's a uh, I actually use Kyle Gray's version of protection. It's a three-step process, and again, it's you're clearing, you're getting that vibration up into a love space, and then that's when you protect yourself. The other site I wanted to explore was Aztalan, an ancient city of pre-Columbian origin. We pulled up, I started feeling Native American energy for sure, and there is a Native American woman standing out in the field right now. And as I'm kind of asking her questions, she's telling me that there was a fire here or there was like a large fire where people passed away. There, there seems to be like a feeling of, um, gosh, I don't want to say like sacrificial in a sense, but I feel like there's a lot of deep-rooted tradition 
in on this land is what she's telling me. I get like a lot of deep rooted tradition on this land and I see a fire burning, huge fire over here. And I also see um, there's stuff set up too over on those ridges and there's Native American men standing up on this area too, kind of watching. And I do feel that there was, um, they're talking about people coming that way towards like this way. So I don't know if there was some sort of fight or what, but they make me feel like they needed to keep watch from that direction. I felt that too, that there was some kind of um, fight or a lot of death or invasion or something here. That's the first thing that I felt. And this land too is like, it's very protected. Because as I'm seeing, I'm seeing up in the sky too, there's protection, like drawn energy from the sky being drawn in around this land too. So I feel like there's a lot of uh, spirit ancestry too um, that they were connected with as well. Do you feel as if families were invaded to children and because I see I see smaller children running around and playing too around here. Now was there a, um I, I feel like a what I'm being shown is a church here, but it's not a church. It it feels um some somewhere that they came to and prayed or did spiritual tradition, but I, I feel as up in this area or something was built here. So what they're showing me, like a big um, where people went to to connect in some in some way to the divine. Definitely, I was getting the pull that way too. People uh, living out that over in those lands over there. Almost, if you look where those those hills are and you go to the right a little bit, like straight that way, there's also, what I'm being told to, there's also a, a praying ground or a connection to the stars that way. So I don't know if they're the constellations or if there's something connected that way, but I feel like a strong connection that way too. This land is really amped up energetically. So there must have been a lot of... Um, of that going on in uh, my spiritual tradition. At one point, there, this is like an entryway. Right here, I feel like someone guarded this area here. So I don't know if there was at one point something built here, but I feel like there is a, someone here kind of just like allowing us to walk through. But I feel like at this at one point in time that there this is like a an entry way to get into something around here. There's this woman that steps forward for both of you and she's very bossy. And she is she feels like a grandmother figure to me, so it could be grandmother, it could be your mother-in-law coming through. She also makes me feel like there's an illness around her passing. Um, but she makes me feel like she's loud and in charge. So who is this for you? Tell me about your dad's mom. Has she passed? She did. Okay, that's who it makes me feel like it's dad's mom. Was she like a little? My dad would call her a little bit person. Bingo! <laughs> <laughs> so what's her first name? Dorothy. Dorothy? Okay, she's who's coming through for you. She's lovely. She's quite funny. She seems like she's a shorter type in terms of stature. Um, she also makes me feel like the, the passing, is she older when she passes? Because she makes me feel like I'm done with life. I'm done. I'm ready to go. My body's had it, and I'm ready to make my transition. And when she made her transition, she had a party on the other side. Like, she was very relieved and very much ready to make her transition. Um, she's with you a lot, and what is interesting is she tells me that she wants to bring humor into your life. She wants you to relax. She wants you to find joy in life. And she goes, and not that you don't, but she says sometimes, and she also, she's a little bossy, she talks about you getting your ducks in a row. 
She really said to get your shit together. <laughs> <laughs> so she's saying, as simple as it is, I need you to sit down, I need you to focus, journal, write out a plan. That's what she comes forward with. Now what's interesting is she gives me the rose as a symbol for her. And that means a lot of different things, but it, it represents the love that she has for you and your family. It's genetically inside of you. Own it and roll with it because she talks about you being more confident. She talks about you owning what it is that you want in this life because you have the support behind you and in life because I've met your mother and she's lovely. Okay, does that make sense to you? So what is next to this grandmother is your grandfather. And he's like, I can't talk because this woman doesn't talk. <laughs> Stop talking. Like, I can't get a word in edgewise. He's with you too. So I could bring probably forward a lot more people, but she was the representative that was chosen to come through today. She also talks about, boy, she is so bossy. Oh my word. Do you exercise? I'm sorry, it's her, right? Not as much as I should. Okay. <laughs> I was a runner in high school. Okay. She's talking about being more active and finding a way to burn some energy off for yourself because she feels like that's important for you to do. Because you get a little sedentary sometimes. You need that extra oomph. This is the woman that you need to bring in. Talk to her. You see roses or you see pictures of roses. That's how she lets you know that she's around. But she's just, like, she's kick-ass, man. The place that we weren't where I felt that, even though there were other spirits that weren't maybe as friendly or welcoming, I felt there was, I felt really supported and serene there. Here, I feel, I feel kind of nauseous. I feel a lot of stuff. It's so strong, I can't really even sort it out. When we were walking down that path, all of a sudden I stepped over a spot and I just felt and saw blood. I felt like being hit with something and I saw blood. Um, it was interesting because when we were pulling in or getting close, all of a sudden I just had this like feeling of, this thought of like sacrifice. I mean, it was so quick and I didn't even remember it until you said, uh -huh sacrifice um and so i feel pretty overwhelmed here um so i feel like there's strong energies but i don't know if there's still a lot of memories of things that happened or what is going on but it feels to me it feels more unsettled just comparing it to the place we were before where that felt very grounded and very serene mm -hmm. I, I don't i don't get a bad feeling but I, I it's a strong feeling mm -hmm. it's a strong for me it's like a strong sense um there's a lot of yeah there's a lot of energy here and i feel like this is a very strict and guided or guarded land here yeah i do feel like this whole section it was owned by some or ran or guard, guided by some native american tribe or I feel like I just want to continue down that way. But there's there's a, a feeling of like headquarters in a sense, like here. Or this is where they retreated to, or this is where they met and did ceremony. They did ceremony. They did ceremony here, and they did ceremony over in that direction as well. The ceremonies would have been like to see them by a fire, large fire. I feel like they lived in the woods there too. Those woods over there, like I see them coming out. Kind of coming out of the woods and then them coming over in this way. Strong. Strong people. I feel like this is as far as they kind of want us to go, to be honest. Is it, do you, I don't even know what this is. Is this, was this something like that? Um, so far, you, as far as I know about the history of this place, you've been 100% correct on everything you said. Wow, okay, yeah. Yeah, I have no idea. I, coming out here, I had no idea. I didn't know if, what, if you were going to do another interview question with us mm -hmm. about what we do as mediums. And then you said kind of like what we get, and then like right away I started seeing stuff, like a huge fire right away. And um, Yeah. Uh, this place did burn down at one time. Um, there was a war between the people that lived here 
and the people that lived there. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. There were sacrifices here. Yeah. It was a long time ago. But yeah, yeah, I feel like um, with the native tribe or whatever like that, that was then, but then I feel like after something had burned down then. Mm-hmm. That's what it feels like to me. It doesn't. It feels like two separate things. Yeah, the people that lived here were intruders, invaders from the people that lived out there. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't. I like. I don't get a bad feeling over there, but I feel like it should. That, that I'm getting a feeling of respect that we should respect the land here and just let that be, or let that be as it is. Um, somebody that uh, I was out here with a year ago or so felt a real strong presence of uh, star energy, which is why they built a place. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, definitely feel a strong connection with the stars when I'm out here. That way, and over here too. Because they're showing me energy, kind of being protection. Like you said, like, they're going to show you what they're going to show you, and it's it's a lot more... Guarded mm -hmm. versus where we were before was a little bit more open and welcoming. I don't feel like it's like get out, but I feel like, mm -hmm. it's like we're only going to give you so much and be respectful and stay in your lane and and um, you're just visitors kind of thing. Yeah. Well, there were archaeologists out here who were digging up the place. Of course, they put everything back, but you know. I feel like Bonnie is buried here for sure. Mm -hmm. That way, over in here. But they do. I do get a feeling of like giving, uh, like giving a uh, some sort of thanks in a sense. So I just feel like I need to grab a piece of grass and put it somewhere, just for like an offering of sure. allowing us to come here and do this mm -hmm. and giving us information. So. Was this put up by people to? That was rebuilt. Okay. I mean, there originally was a... Um, uh, I meant when I said put up by people, you got what I meant, yeah. Yeah, there originally was a wall here that eventually decayed, mm -hmm. and this has been reconstructed. Okay. And that wall was there for a reason. Thinking that it might have been physically uncomfortable to be an archaeologist and be working here. I imagine it's physically uncomfortable to be an archaeologist working here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I feel a lot of calmness now. Yeah, they were wondering what you were doing here. This would be a mother figure. Your mom crossed over. Yes. Okay, so I have mom for you stepping forward. I know that she passes of illness as well. Do you understand that? Yes. And I also know that she has some issues in her throat, lungs, or chest area before passing. Do you understand that? Yes. Um, I feel like there is more than one thing going on here. Like I get something, but I pass of something else. Or, or definitely mutates or changes. Do you understand that as yes. well? Thank you. Would you say you and your mom were best friends? No. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know how else to Sorry, say mom. that. <laughs> 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 Gotta check on that in person. So basically, when she comes Sorry, forward, mom. there's a lot of compassion and healing that she's trying to bring forward for you today in this relationship. It does feel like we have. Um, some confusions. This is a word I've been studying with the Tibetan monks all week, and so what they talk about our bullshit is confusions, right? <laughs> this kind of confusions, if you know what I mean. This has to, she puts the word ignorance with it. So this is my sign or my symbol of only knowing what she knew. But you understand that, but it still sucked for you. Do you understand Absolutely. that? Absolutely. And she didn't get that while she was here. So her message from, from the other side is, I see now the angels have helped me and I stand in the light. And she tells me you wonder and you worry about that, and you wonder if she's okay, if she finally found peace. And she's trying to give you peace by letting you know she has found peace. And that there really is a God, she says, right? So understand that there is heaven. This whole thing that you wonder about is real. And she has found peace. And in her peace, she has found how she has created you to be a being that sometimes stops or sabotages her own happiness. Do you understand that? So there are some things coming up for you right now. She's showing me um, relationship could use some uplifting. Do you understand that? No. Okay, are you in a relationship right now? Yes. 
okay? So they're moving to the next level, maybe taking more trips, maybe spending more time together. That's what I mean by that. You understand that? Yeah. Within the self, there are some creative projects or something you've been wanting to do that you haven't done yet. This would be like writing a book or something of that nature. Make sense to you? Oh, yeah. Okay, this would be the time. Your mother's going to help you from the other side to create that and make that happen. But it has to come from within you. So there, come, there comes to be this energy within you right now that likes to um, only get so confident. Now, those that see you on the outside think you're a very confident person. People come to you for advice. People count on you, and you love that. But inside, alone, by yourself, sometimes not so much. Do you understand that? Sure. Your mom raises her hand to take um, responsibility of that. Now, were you able to be with her before she passes? Yes. Because she shows me you having a conversation with her, yes. but you must not have been able to speak with her, or you didn't think she, you weren't sure she could hear you. Do you understand? I was pretty sure she could hear me. Okay. She couldn't converse. Okay. Because she, she keeps showing me, I didn't know if it was because you were with her or that you were away from her, but she has to show me that there was this something in the way of that, um, and that she took the words that you said, she heard them, and was able to cross with peace and ease. It's as if she needed to hear those words in order to cross over. Yes. And she needs to validate that for you today. She also comes to you with the cardinal or the red bird. So watch for the cardinal or the red bird. And there also needs to, I see you looking under your car seat or finding something under your car seat. This could be the pennies, but this is going to, like I think when you leave, you will go do that and you'll laugh and you'll giggle. There's gonna be something under there that will give you a memory as well. So I'm gonna leave you with that. How many different types of vibrations do you feel mm -hmm. at any particular one session or maybe over a series of them? In one session, different levels of energy come in with different, with different energy. I guess that's the best way to explain it. Spirits at different levels on the other side, and so they bring forth a different kind of vibration. And a lot of that depends on the path of healing that that soul is on, how long they've been gone. So it does feel different and it's almost like there's layers. And that's evolved over the years in terms of how I've learned to receive that information. But I would say that in any reading, you can, you can really go through several different levels of energy based on, again, where that soul is and the work that they're doing and, and how they're managing on the other side. How long does an average session last for you? So for me, I do 30-minute sessions or 50-minute sessions. I'm a medium that gets through a lot of information, typically very quickly, um, because when spirit starts rolling in, um, the messages come very quickly for the most part for me. And I also give the opportunity for several energies to come through, several spirits. So I don't cap that you get one or two spirit or loved ones that come through. If that energy wants to come through, whether it's just to validate and say hello, that's great. I'll allow them, you know, to do that because they're communicating with me. How often you do something just for yourself or just to investigate some specific aspect of something as opposed to having a client there who is asking you, you know, can I talk to dad or right. something of that sort? So I do a thing once a week where I um, not only meditate, I do that every day, but I do a thing on the side where I connect in with my guides. I do believe that everyone has a spirit team, um, you know, archangels, uh, you know, all that kind of thing, whatever you believe in with that. But I do believe that everyone does have a spirit team and I do take time um, once a week to connect in with them. And I do that for um, answers for my life that I'm seeking. Um, intuition based on myself. Um, I don't spend too much time connecting with um, people that have crossed over. Um, I do feel that our spirit team, um, most of it aren't people. I feel that they are angels and I do believe in angels. Do you ever get calls three in the morning from some spirit or other and says, hey, I want to talk know, to you? Yeah, it's interesting because I really have done my very best to draw my guidelines and boundaries as far as what I will allow in terms of spirit moving into my space and when that happens. And the rule of thumb for me um, that I've come to 
to be comfortable with because for a lot of years I didn't have control over it and I experienced anxiety for a lot a lot of years because I didn't understand what was really going on and I think a lot of people have those same experiences because they're empathic and they don't realize it so over the years by using Reiki and just you know um, again your own life experience you learn when you're going to be open and when you're not so for me I don't walk around with the gift turned on I, I when I'm at work I work and when I leave I'm done now if I want to tune in and tap into that energy I absolutely will do that but at home my rule of thumb especially in my my when I'm sleeping is that I don't want to be bothered however at night is when we do some traveling and we do a lot of work in our sleep and so I will wake up and there will be some activity in the room and in prayer I call in my team and I ask them to nicely go away um, but there were times when I again didn't have that kind of control and I would have spirit come to me and they were asking me to help them find the light or to cross them over and so that was very interesting however I want to go to bed and I want to sleep so typically when that does happen I dismiss it or I don't really give it a whole lot of attention and just kind of clear myself and go back to sleep. Do you have any one or two specific spirit guides that you always contact or do you have like a team of folks that yep. stop by and visit? Yep, Archangel Michael is a, um, a huge guide of mine. Also Merlin too is with me as well. And I do have um, family members as well that have crossed over that do make their presence known to me almost on a weekly basis that they're with me. And through meditation with connecting with them once a week, um, they do inspire me with answers and stuff that I'm seeking in my life. Any totem animals either for yourself or work with them for other people or? Yeah, I, I do believe in spirit guides. They come to me in my dreams and um, they're very vivid that way. I sounds pretty crazy, but my spirit guides come through to me um, in my dreams with chasing me and attacking me. And they're very like, very realistic, very almost scary. It does feel scary, but what happens is I'll have a dream, say it's a bear, and I'll be running through the woods and this bear will be chasing me, trying to attack me. And um, that's their way of getting my attention with something going on in my life. And sure enough, I'll wake up and I will look into it and it'll always be very specific and detailed towards something that I'm looking for or searching for or something going on in my life that the message behind that is there always. It's pretty freaky. I think for me, my spirit team changes and evolves like all of our teams do. I could describe my team as legions. There are, it's almost like layers, like I was talking with, with energy there are members of our team that I think step forward based on what we're going through and experiencing in our life and they're there to help and assist us with the challenges or you know whatever it is that we're going through in our life at that time. So for me, my team, I feel shifts and I feel the shift in meditation when I tap into my team. When I, when I meditate, I kind of call that my board meeting time because that's when my team comes in. And we talk and discuss things that need to be talked about and discussed. And if we don't, then I'm sitting there just allowing, um, as we should when we meditate. But I feel like my team shifts and changes over time. I feel, and I was told by a very good friend of mine who's a reader several years ago that I have seven core. Um, team members and there are some of those that are still intact and still there for me but there have been new team members that come in and then there's a base and a core of, of my team that I work with Jesus is very important um, Archangel Michael uh, Archangel Gabrielle some of those energies at one point Merlin was was stepping in and so it's interesting because you feel these different energies around you but um, I'd say on average, probably four to seven team members. But if you look beyond that, there's lots and lots. And they've accumulated with you over many lifetimes. So. Do you know them by name or uh, some of them you just know by spirit number 43 or something? Right. So sometimes <laughs> they'll tell me their names. Um, I had one, this was interesting, guy come in very recently to help me 
with my business and she told me her name was Michelle and I said okay I can remember that name um, but as far as other guides they don't always show me or tell me their names uh, sometimes they do for me it's about just knowing that they're there and feeling that energy and sometimes they'll show me what they look like <clears throat> in my mind's eye so that I can see who they are and what they're up to. Spirits go through an evolutionary process. You know, after we pass on, they go into the next realm and they go in stages, in evolutionary stages. So you have, you know, in the middle, you have the disincarnate people who are like relatives, families that have passed on. You have the lower energies or the lower entities um, beneath that who are considered tricksters or they're considered like the ones that are inhabiting houses. They're not beyond that point yet. They're still attached to the material world um, through, through means of either the method of their death or unfinished business. Below that, um, below the lower entities is, um, and I hate to throw, I don't throw out the term very lightly, but that's when you get into the stuff that's considered demonic because it's intelligent, it's trickster, it's malicious, um, and they are here for the purpose of dragging down our own personal evolutionary process while we're here. And then after the disincarnate entities, going back to the middle, above that you have your guardians. You know, you have the spirits who are more evolved. They've been through more lifetimes. They've gone through more of an evolutionary process. Beyond that are the spirit guides that come down, give us information. They're intelligent. They give us intelligent responses, and they have a little bit more of an understanding beyond our own perception. After that, they're more highly evolved spirits. Um, you know, until you get to, you know, something that's considered like an angel or what we would call like an angel or an ascended master. Um, and then after that, you leave this realm. You know, you no longer are incarnated as a spirit or as a person on this realm. How much advanced knowledge, let's put it that way, can you pick up on either for yourself or for others? Um, it's interesting with, because there's a difference between mediumship and connecting with loved ones and psychic readings. Psychic readings are more of a thing where you're connecting in with their energy and mediumship is a thing where you're connecting with loved ones who have passed. Now I do know that some psychics do future readings. Um, I don't necessarily believe that you can predict one's future um, because I don't believe anything set in stone. Now I do believe some things are meant to happen, um, but it's I believe in free will. So I believe in that we have the choice to you know pursue um, what it is that we feel we should do. Get any protests? Any buddy upset with you? Um, no, very rarely. I've had a couple people kind of reach out and um, in a negative way, but um, I know there's a lot of that out there, um, but I do think they play an important role with all of this too. Um, I believe in everyone should be skeptical. I believe that everyone should question things and not just blindly believe anything. Um, I think when people are cynical, kind of, you know, going out of their way to, um, kind of denounce something or be negative isn't great, um, but I do believe in that plays a role in this whole thing too. Every time that I see clients, um, I arrive at the center early and I not just clear the space physically, our, our center, um, but I call in my team, I call in um, high vibrational beings, spirits, spirit guides, sometimes I'll call in Native American energy, Mayan energy anybody who really is here to help and my intention is always set that my client receives the messages and the healing that's intended for them in that session that I'm able to hear things clearly openly honestly and without ego and I ground myself and I ask Mother Earth to help me to stay grounded in my sessions and really just ask my team and my clients team to help that the session goes as it should and that everybody that comes to see me leaves a better version of themselves when they leave. I still, with the detail and the specifics that come through, I still um, am kind of in awe at the whole situation, at the whole experience of everything happening. A lot of it's, it's all positive, it's all good. I don't think there's any one specific reading or event. Who in this section over here can understand that information? We got a mother who's passed, and there's also, I have made reference to the dementia, or the Alzheimer's, 
or fogginess of the mind before she transitions. Um, okay, okay, so I'm gonna, okay, let's see here. Who can take this information in this section as I'm going this way? Okay, can you, can you stand up, please? Yeah. Your mother's passed, right, yes. correct? And your, mo your mom's mom would also be on the other side, correct? My mom. Your, mo your her mother, too? Yes. Okay, I have to make reference to, okay, before I do that, does the, the dementia or the Alzheimer's make sense with her, or the fogginess of the mind before she transitions? The, fog, the dementia and the fogginess, because she was out of it before she died. Okay. Was, her mind was born. Okay, so as I'm connecting with her soul here, she makes me feel as if when she was living, I'm like a very outgoing person. Like I'm a very, um, I like to do a lot of stuff. I like to be active. I don't like to sit around. I don't. I'm not introverted in any way at all. Would that make sense to your mom? Just, just yes or no. Yes, yes or no. Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, and you can add in too if you want, but I just this is the way I keep the energy going here. So just yes or no. So where would the cancer reference make sense to? Is this with her mom? No, but my sister or daughter died of cancer. Okay, and she's also on the other side then too. Yes. Okay, because I have to talk about the cancer too being important to this woman. And who's Janet or Jan? Her mom. And she's the one with the cancer, correct? No. Okay. And is she still living, though, Janet? No, she's on the other side. Okay, I have to talk about the J name, woman J name here, though, too. I have to say hello to someone here with the J. So Jamie, or there's like another Janet, or there's another J. If you don't know, that's okay. I'm on, no, no, no. Um, so uh, I have your son, so I'm kind of connecting with Mike has your mom. Your mom says exactly what Mike says that um, she didn't. She did not treat you as if you were her daughter. I have that absolutely. So she said the one way she's going to try to make up for that in the spirit world is to take care of your boy in heaven. Okay. So she has your mom, and she's going to be the mom she should have been for you. She's going to be the grandma she can be. Do you understand that? So I need you to know that she is accepting him in loving arms and taking him over. To the spirit world. So she passes before your son, is this correct? Does your son go first? That's okay, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Know that they're both together on the same side. And I know this is because I can just feel how, how this is for you right now. And I'm so, so sorry. I have already prepared the space and in front of me is the candle and the glass of water. Um, it makes it easier for spirits to communicate as the candle heats them up and they do appear and they do communicate um, through the water. Generally what I do is I start and I ask clients, you know, what specific spirit would you like to contact today? My mother. The image that's coming to me is a woman who is um, fiery. Like very, very fiery and very, very sharp, very, very like quick-witted. Somebody who may not have expressed everything that was going on in their mind. Um, somebody who kept a lot, um, a lot to themselves. I do feel like she is, um, I, I do feel like she, a little, she's a little bit standoffish and a little bit reluctant to answer. And I see her kind of like turning her head. Um, I also see her kind of pointing, um, pointing and signaling to a man that was involved because I do feel like there was a man um, and there was an issue with a man that she's not happy with at this point in time. That be my father or is it a man that's passed on or a man that's still here? Um, it is a man that's still here. Ah. Um, and I do feel like it is, would be younger than your father. Um, okay. So I do feel like there was an issue there. Um, and how things were handled, so not necessarily happy with that. But I do feel like she is close, and I do feel like she's more of the, I'm going to stand back and watch. I'm not necessarily going to be actively involved kind of person. Um, but I do feel like she is very active, and I feel like she also oversees, um, I feel like she also oversees a child, or she's helping you oversee a child. Because um, I do see her, um, I do see her very caring and very in that, um, and very um, connected to that, helping you through a process with the child. As far as any specific messages, she's shaking her head. Yeah, and she keeps on saying, I told you everything you need to know at this point in time. Because there was a man who was living in her house who mm -hmm. did cause some damage there. Okay. And I could see where she would have some consternation about him. Yes, and she did depart. She is going. Okay. 
Now, one question mm -hmm. I, I would ask is, do you think the spirits are communicating a little bit differently? Do you think the spirits are aware of the, the presence of the camera and that we're being filmed? Um, I think they are aware of that because it does add to the electromagnetic field of the area. Um, so it does kind of throw off the communication a little bit. Um, she probably would communicate more direct um, in a dark room, you know, in a room that was like completely prepared. Um, so she probably would have more to say then, yes. The contemporary New Age version of spiritualism was brought into focus in the latter half of the 20th century by Jane Roberts, who channeled a spirit named Seth and had quite an output of almost a dozen books. Soon following were Jay-Z Knight and her guide Ramtha, John Peniel and his guide from Atlantis, Gary Renard and the angels he developed a relationship with, and Lee Carroll and his spirit guide Cryon, who is not a person but more of a committee. Cryon has embraced the new technology of the internet by having his own page with frequent lengthy lectures from the ethereal realms. Usually it's just a lecture, but sometimes his staff jazzes one up, like this supercharged edition. Greetings, dear ones. I'm Cryon of Magnetic Service. It's a stretch for the human mind. Even those who have heard this before, it's still a stretch. The man in the chair is not the man in the chair. And you're used to his voice, his countenance, his personality. He sits in the chair and he leaves. This is called channeling. It has been done forever by human being. And some have called it trance. That is when a human being steps aside and lets something else come in which is higher, not lower, higher, that they carry within them. Inside you, at all levels, is the creative source. God inside is the message from all spiritual systems. God inside. The oldest spiritual system you know about, the jewel acknowledge of Hinduism, has a basic premise, God inside. Why in that to today? The spiritual system today, God is inside. It's not wishful thinking, it is intuition. And God inside is waiting. Always have you discovered it. And the message that is always there first that says you don't know what you don't know. But the love for you from the other side of the veil is absolutely profound. If there's one, one message and only one that could squeak through the veil today is this. You have no idea how much you love and know it by God. No idea. And if you will open that little portal you have that every single human being is allowed to have, that's when things change. The synchronicity of your life, the healing of yourself, the beauty of life itself can be yours. You have different paths here, old soul. Some of you are sensitive, some of you are dense. I know that. It's not an indictment. It is not a judgment of your spirituality. It is simply an attribute of your life. Some of you are intellectual. Some of you are logical. Don't you think we know that? The only thing we will plead with you is don't let these things get in the way of God and Son. Are you so invested in your pride of the intellectual that you won't allow the Creator to pop in once in a while? I love you. I want you to think about that. 
dear one, there's never been a time like this one where the belief of the human being has this much energy. Do you believe what is being taught? Or are you just writing it on a piece of paper? Are you collecting pieces of paper with information? Or are you going to put down your paper and think about it? And cognize it? It's you we're talking about. It's not a seminar. Not really. It's a communication, if you really want to hear it. Between us and you. seldom will I open it up, but if I do open it up, meaning that I'm not really going to a direct person, I will give enough information that only one person will be able to claim that. So um, those are the ways I work. Um, it's pretty simple. So just be as open as you can. Um, I also tell people to um, try not to have um, like a full-on expectation of the person who are, you are really wanting to hear from. Um, usually what happens is that like 90% of the time that person who are, you are really want to hear from will come through, they may not come through right away. So maybe something that you may um, not be expecting to hear from. So that kind of goes with all of us too. But just something to be aware of. So we have what we call piggybacking going on. I don't know if she talked about it beforehand. But um, it's where one of us will be directed to somebody specific, but it'll be also almost the exact same story um, fits your life as well then you should know that that is your spirit speaking through Mike as well. So you should take that as a reading for you. So did you have that going on as well? Okay. But that can happen. So if we're reading for someone in the audience and it really feels like it should be you, I know you were nodding at a lot of that stuff too. It might not be every single thing is going to match, but the majority of it would match yours. Then you would know that you're involved in a piggyback reading. Okay. So just know that that doesn't mean that your spirit didn't come through. So, you know, I'm sure that people come in sometimes with agendas of people that have passed on, they've got a oh, contact. Absolutely. But what happens if their dearly departed person fails to manifest? You just have to be honest because not all spirits want to be communicated with. Um, one instance that I'm, uh, one instance that's kind of heartbreaking for me is there was a woman and I was doing a party at somebody's house. I was doing an event mm -hmm. um, and this woman came in and wanted to communicate with her daughter who had passed on. Uh. Her daughter wanted nothing to do with the woman and her daughter actually, the spirit of her daughter, I saw her when I closed my eyes. She told me and I did not tell the mother this, but she told me flat out, I have nothing to say to her. She needs to stop bothering me. And she turned her back, and I had to tell the woman, I'm like, I'm sorry. Your daughter has nothing to say to you at this time. Oh, dear. Did she cry? No, she was actually quite angry with me. And she's like, well, my daughter always has something to say. And I'm like, you know, I'm like, she didn't have anything to say today. And I told the woman, I'm like, you know, I'm not going to make something up for your daughter. I go by what they tell me or I go by what my guide tells me. And my guide tells me that no further information can be given. So I'm sorry. Um, I'll be happy to refund the session for you, but I can't ask your daughter anything. Emotionally, um, does it wear you out at the end? Because you're... Yes. <laughs> so, you know, the way I explain this process is that it's almost like you're an air traffic controller to spirit as an exposed wire needing to be grounded. And so, wait, before I come in, I'm not gonna lie, I get super nervous and my heart's going because I can feel everything. And actually when I came on stage today, I almost started crying mm -hmm. because I feel everything. Mm -hmm. And so over the years and getting to get more comfortable with these gifts, you learn to control that more. So when Jen and I do events or I have a day where I'm seeing clients for more than about three hours, that's about my happy place and then I need to be done. I can and sometimes we have what I call a spiritual hangover the next day. And I just don't do anything. Um, but it, the longer that you do it, it's like a muscle. So the more that you do it, the stronger that you get. And so for me, in my experience, I can only speak for myself, but, and I know we talk about this stuff often, um, 
it, it can be draining. However, you just, you learn how to manage that. You learn how to take care of yourself. You learn how to prepare for things like this. And it, it tends to go pretty okay. But it's just like, even with your husband, the amount of love Oofta. that spirit has that moves through me, there are no words. There's just no words. And I feel everything, like with your mother and with your husband and with your, like I feel everything. And so sometimes I'll even feel how they pass. My heart will hurt, my back will hurt. I feel like I'm gonna vomit. And then they let it go because that's how they can communicate with me to let me know that that's what was an issue for them in this lifetime. So we've learned to take care of ourselves and to manage that, but it's it's managing your schedule and, and taking the breaks. And You know, I've been doing this quite a long time, so I, I know that I can sustain quite some time, but I have certain things that help, and one is chocolate. So <laughs> I have lots of chocolate in my car if you need some. <laughs> It's a grounding thing for me. Um, about seven years ago, smoking was a thing for me. That was a lot more fun, but um, chocolate works better to these days. Um, so, you know, we all have a thing that kind of helps us ground, helps us move forward, helps us kind of sustain this kind of life choice. But we, you know, certainly if we don't sleep enough, we're going to pay for that. You know, if we drink too much vodka, we're gonna pay for that, you know? So we try to really, we think about this, like Stacy was saying, this is, we get to this point and so much work goes into this. And with this being in Stacy and Mike's town, you know, they did a lot more work than I had to in this event. Um, but running a tour for three years, I know, like it's the advertising, it's the, all this stuff. So we're wearing all these hats. And then gig day is mediumship hat. And I think Mike said something like, oh, I'm just really hard to deal with today. Like, gig day, get away, right? You know, so so we have these kind of rituals. We have these kind of things. And like Stacey said, the number of years that we're in it, the longer we're in it, um, the, the more we learn how to sustain that energy without having the hangover. But, you know, we choose this as a lifestyle. This isn't like we can just only choose it for two hours on a Saturday, right? This is a lifestyle that we live. We joke, it's like the mafia. Once you're in this, you ain't getting out. Do you ever get any messages that you don't want to pass on? Ooh. Good question. Good question. I wouldn't say that I don't. At my stage of my career, you're going to get it. But there, there has been times definitely where as I've grown, when I was young medium, I was you know, diarrhea reading everywhere, everywhere I went, kind of like a Chusa Caputo show. Um, that does kind of happen sometimes. And, and of course, when I was doing that in the beginning, it was, there wasn't all those shows and those people didn't really know about it. So there was not a lot of people to teach us in the area. So, so I kind of did some things maybe not proud of. But, but now as, as the adult, more mature medium, I do feel like there are things that there are certain times that I would choose not to deliver a message. And I'll try to negotiate with spirit, like somehow I think that's ever gonna work, right? <laughs> like, I still think I can try that. And then I'll say, well, I'll be in a restaurant, I'll be like, no way, she's a waitress, she's working, I'm not gonna tell her this, she's gonna be crying her whole shift, and also she'll come up and be like, I just found out I'm getting off earlier at my last table. Right. And I'm like, oh no, no, there's, she's got all those other tables to finish, boop, 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 all the tables leave, pay their check, they're gone. I, I once had a, a lady with a, her husband, and I'm like, oh no, Spirit, I am not messing with that lady's breakfast. She's having a nice time with her husband. Oh no, he gets up and leaves. <laughs> so do I not give the message? No, I will, if Spirit's gonna work that hard to get my hiney up and go deliver that message, I'll be as appropriate as possible. But are there times when I say, no, this is just not, not okay? Um, I do get to say that as a medium, I do get to set those boundaries. Do I get a message that I don't want to deliver? Um, in my practice and in my training, I've learned how to deliver those in a, in a special way. So I may shift what exactly what I'm hearing. That's why you might hear some of us sometimes ask it in a question form instead of direct, not because we don't know the answer, but because we're trying to 
form it into a way that's appropriate for 60, So when people. she asked you about your relationship with your mom, she knew already that it was not great. And right. so... Like, would you say that you have a good relationship with your mom? <laughs> I freaking know she didn't. But if she goes, yes, I'm not going to be like, hey, your mom says you have a sucky relationship, right? So, so again, to answer your question, I think there's ways with training and time and and the work that we do, because we put in a lot of training, all of us have gone through a lot of training with professional mediums, and so we learn how, and just experience alone, I think we learn how to to kind of maneuver through some of those those messages. So Stacy, you said that you traveled quite a bit. If you've ever stayed in a place where you know that maybe there's not some good energy, <laughs> and if so, how do you know? Oh, I got some stories. I'm from Baltimore, and Gettysburg is 90 minutes away. Oh. So yes, and I do travel, and what's interesting is that I will do my due diligence to clear the area and the space before I go. There's ways to do that. Yeah, before y'all came in here. She comes in here, she's got sage going and oils and everywhere. She's like, she goes, she goes you just set up that stuff and just let me go. I'm going to go do my thing. And she's all over this place. I have a friend. And you've I all been friend. healed. Right. right. <laughs> well, you've all been cleared, saged, healed, balanced before you walk through our door. So you can thank Stacey for all that. Thank you. So um, really quick, because these stories are just it's awesome to see shows on TV. Um, if you've ever seen Kindred Spirits, I love that show, and The Dead Files. The, those shows I love because they're very kind to spirit. Zach Baggins is over the top. I'm sorry if that gets into the documentary, but he's not always nice, and he's shocked. He's a paranormal investigator. Why are you shocked that spirit just touched you? So at any rate, um, I am very, very conscious of energy. And I feel a lot, so when I'm going to be traveling, I have everything cleared. I think we've all had experiences in one way or another where we've been in a home and something doesn't feel comfortable to us. And I did stay in an 1800s home in Gettysburg, and it was the last time I ever allowed my husband to book a hotel for <laughs> breakfast, because neither one of us slept because there was a family in this in this house and there's so much energy and I was anxious and I kind of joked if I could have drugged myself or drank myself to sleep, I probably would have done it that night because it was so bad. Now this was early, early on in my own, like I was still not 100% aware of what I could do. So I didn't have the control that I do now, but all of us can talk, you know, can clear energy and clear spaces. We're all energy, so that's what we carry forward to everybody. We talk a lot about energy and clearing and how that impacts you from other people as well as like energetic imprints in homes. So yes, I can and can go into a home. I've done it for Tina's daughter. I walked upstairs and even my oldest daughter went, whoa, there's some people standing in this room. So we clear the space and make sure that they get where they need to go. One of you are connecting. Are the other two of you connecting as well? It's kind of a thing with us, the three of us, because we worked together on my tour that I did. So I did a mediumship tour that actually did that specifically for three years. I brought uh, mediums all over the state of Wisconsin together, up to six at a time on a stage we did. And um, But it's not something that all mediums can do. I, I think they can do, but would have to uh, train for that. I think it takes some work and some talent to do it. Um, so for us three, absolutely, because we've done it together for so many times. Um, we did kind of have a little pack today to try not to do that as much and just try to not make our readings quite as long to reach as many of you as possible. Um, because sometimes we could set, stay with the same group for quite some time because we all read differently and we receive our messages differently. So um, what Mike's gonna get for you, I'm gonna get something different from Stacey for Stacy. so we could all give you you know, an amazing reading, but um, it would take quite some time. So um, in this, these type of um, gallery setting, it's gonna be a little bit shorter message, but yes, we can, for the short answer is yes, we can pop into each other's energy, and, and like um, if somebody's struggling, because one of the things of the tour too was students, so we would try to always have, in the first two years, we tried to have a student with all the professional means. We have one student and all professional. And so if a student would be struggling 
it was very helpful as me being the head of that tour, that was kind of my job, was not really to start the readings or do them, mine was to kind of fill in if somebody needed that. And so I could help them, or I could see exactly who they're talking to, I could see if they're correct, if they're not, if they're struggling, I can see why they're only getting part of that message and what part they're missing, right? But it's, it's like only in the way that I read. It doesn't necessarily mean they're doing anything wrong, it just means in my version of reading, this is what I'm seeing, they could be seeing a whole different thing. Does that make sense? Yes. And so to follow up with that, mm -hmm. right before the break when Michael was going through doing that last one and you came up after that and said, if anybody else is connecting with that, were you, was that something? Connected? Yeah, because I could see that he had, we talked about that at, at break too, that he was kind of transitioning. There was quite a lot of dead people speaking to him at one time. Mike was sure of who he had. We just saw the other people kind of hopping in with the other belonged people in the audience. So what Mike was very confident, he knew who he had, he knew that he was with the right person, but we could kind of see the other, the piggybacking going on. So that's why I made sure, because I, I could see for sure that somebody, well, there was two people I think that had, um, definitely their loved one was with them, but, um, I knew that Mike knew exactly where he was. He's very sure about that. So that's why I mentioned that, because that is something we try to say ahead of time. We just kind of didn't talk about today. Um, but that's why I mentioned that. Another in-print and online guru from beyond is another group mind calling itself Abraham, channeled through Esther Hicks. You must become a vibrational match to the qualities that you seek, because what comes to you always matches you. Breathe in, breathe out. Focus on the best you can in others, and when characteristics you want are missing, practice seeing them anyway. When you practice the thoughts of the things that you desire, they must show up in your experience. It is law. Breathe in. Breathe out. You are doing extremely well. The relationships that you seek are flowing to you. Relax and enjoy the unfolding. Feel appreciation for what is and eagerness for what is coming. There is great love here for you. Breathe in. For the next few minutes, letting the music guide you. Breathe in. Breathe out. Your description, really accurate and good description, really very good with words, describes how most people do live their lives. And by that we mean they react to life as it's coming, so that it's a series of reactions. And it's a physical, action-oriented, doing the best you can given the circumstances that you're living in sort of life. Now, the underlying and important thing that was happening during all of that that you weren't consciously aware of but that your inner being was is that with all those ups and downs of reacting to life which caused you to want more and then the desire was stronger for a while so things got better and then you weren't consistent enough in it and so then it didn't happen the way you wanted it to so then you focused upon it not happening so it got worse and so it was actually going in the direction of what your focus was but you weren't really so aware that you were creating your own reality then and you weren't working in concert with a steady guidance. Instead, you were using as guidance reactions of others and other humans. They're a terrible gauge. They're really fickle, awful guidance to use because 
first of all, they're not that interested in you, not as much as you'd like to believe that they are. And next, most of them are not that stable either. So it's just a bunch of bobbing corks on a raging sea sort of thing. And then you get very philosophical about how your life's going. And so not very satisfying. But the underlying thing that is happening during all of that is that you are launching rockets of desire. And the desire is, I want to understand this. I want to fulfill my reason for being. I want to hook up with that greater guidance. Things that you knew coming in, life has now buffeted you about enough that you've launched those strong, 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 strong rockets. And we want you to hear this above anything that you ever hear, ever, 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 ever again from us or anyone else. This is what we want you to hear. The universe always hears what you mean, not what you're saying. So your life caused you to offer a vibration which caused you to create a vortex. So the meaning that you were radiating to the universe was not, I want out of this physical experience. The meaning that you were radiating was, I want to understand it. I want to flow with it. I want to be in the flow. I want to fulfill my purpose. I want to understand. I want to be deliberate. I want to have steady control of my own life experience. And so you did create that just right because what you thought you wanted, which was the bailing out of all the resistance, you didn't want out of life. You wanted out of the resistance, you see. And so your inner being even with all of that intentionality, still helped you to accomplish what you really want, which is a stronger than ever zest for life and understanding about life. There are a lot more such channelers with spirit guides on the internet if one keeps looking. Some even channel such personalities as Jesus, as did Victor Hugo's group, and others way back when. Oddly enough, Jesus sounded very much like a Victorian age gentleman in Hugo's notes whereas he sounds more hip and loose in today's readings. Clearly, Jesus either grows with the age, or he's greatly affected by the medium he's talking through. So, too, do we notice the same phenomenon in the Bible, one book to the next. A comparative study of mediums and their channeled messages, therefore, is a science waiting to happen. What advice would you give to somebody who was... Uh, seeking to contact a medium? I would tell them to go about it in a very um, researched manner. You know, you definitely have to research who you're going to um, because there are some people who call themselves mediums and they don't get as strong of a connection as somebody who is inherently a medium. Um, your best bet, I feel, would actually be to contact your local spiritualist church um, or go to somebody who is reputable that you're referred to by someone that you know. Um, that, I feel, would be the best, um, the best way to choose your medium. Um, and you also have to kind of interview them to see which one's right for you. Because some are a lot more compassionate than others. And I can tell you from my own personal experience and how I operate, um, I operate from a place of I'm an intermediary. I'm the information giver. Um, I'm not here to heal the wounds between you and your loved one. So you also have to look at what your own needs are before you look at who can satisfy those needs for you. Psychics and mediums not only have their critics and debunkers, but people who know how to game the system, as do many televangelists. Nobody did a better job and more entertaining analysis of this than John Oliver's staff, who filed this report as this film was being made. If you watch daytime TV at all, you'll see that they pop up all the time. My next guest started communicating with the dead when she was just a toddler. She's a wife and a mom who also happens to talk to dead people. Please welcome celebrity pet psychic. Our next guest is a clairvoyant to the stars. We're back with a group of friends who share a very unique bond. They are all psychic. Anyone who does believe in psychic powers, I know there is nothing I could say that could convince you otherwise. Logic isn't the reason that you believe in them, and it won't be the reason that you stop. Which is not to say that I won't be showing you clips of psychics fucking up. But that is only because it's really funny. This is a girl who you said was beaten and killed. Okay. This little girl is me. And you told somebody that she's dead. Wait a minute. You didn't disappear? I'm right here. Well, that's interesting, isn't it? Yeah, that is interesting. 
I guess her psychic abilities didn't include predicting when she'd be utterly humiliated on national television. <laughs> they are everywhere on TV. Some even have their own reality shows. She's a professional psychic. It's me, Mary L. Malana Mia. Mary knows best. Hollywood Media on E. Psychic Tia on A and E. Mama Medium, November fifth at nine on TLC. Spirit is important to me, just as important as my hair and my nails. Long Island Medium only on TLC. The crazy thing about these shows is how they choose to focus on the psychic's personal lives. Who gives a shit about that? If I actually believed they could communicate with the dead, that is the only thing I'd want to see them doing. Real or not is incidental. What matters is a lot of people think they are. And the psychic industry is both larger and grimmer than you might assume. By one estimate, it's a $2.2 billion industry. And there has been a lot of predatory behaviour. When the, the FTC settled charges with the companies behind the Psychic Readers Network in 2002, the one that featured Miss Cleo, they found that over one three-year period, they had charged people about a billion dollars and had collected half of it. I asked Stacy if she was willing to sit for a session in front of a paranormal investigative team to see what results they might register on their equipment. She not only agreed, she brought in two equally agreeable clients, one of whom she worked with before and one she didn't plus an additional medium and client to give a broader perspective. The team that volunteered came with a few handheld devices bought at hardware stores for measuring temperature, electrical, environmental energy, and so forth, traditionally used in ghost hunting. There's a female here with you and she's definitely on your mom's side. So it feels like a grandmother figure to me. Um, mom is still here, correct? Yep. Okay, so this would be your mother's mother, is that correct? She's still here, still so here. then we're gonna go back to the great grandmother because okay. she's definitely here. So the other thing I'm seeing is they're either a sister or an aunt energy. So who is this for you? Yeah. Okay, so this is your mother's sister? Okay, because I'm hearing sister aunt, sister aunt. So what's her first name? Early. And you were close to her? She's yeah. my grandmother. Okay, because she's going like this, which is my single fourth. I'm close to her. Is there a cancer connection with her? Because she's making me feel like there's a cancer connection. It almost feels like it kind of goes everywhere at yep. some point. And I don't know if it starts in the chest or the breast area, or there's a female kind of connection with the cancer. But she does make me feel like there's definitely cancer all over her. Okay. There are moments when you feel very low or you feel emotionally almost I don't want to say depressed but kind of yeah. like super down right. and she says part of that is you trying to learn how to manage the energy around you yeah. because you are sensitive and you are empathic so she's talking about you learning more and that's part of why you're here today so that you have a better understanding of who you really are while you're here because she says and what she shows me is you've just scratched the surface of what it is that you're meant to do while you're here. She she shows me a, a like a boy. So do you have a brother? Yes. Okay, is do you just have one brother? Um yes, I'm in mom's side. Okay. Because um she makes me feel like you guys are her kids. Okay. All right. So nieces, nephew kind of thing that she really um is very connected into the two of you in terms of excuse me she views you as her child or her children but there's a male she shows me that there's a male as well um she talks about animals so was there a pet or a dog or somebody that something either she had or maybe you guys have had because she's like i have the animals with me okay that would be actually us my dog and my um grandfather's oh. bird the other thing is um for your great grandmother is there a farm connection on that side of the family or land yes okay so is it a big plot of land it or was, okay yeah. because that's what i'm seeing is like and it's been sold or yes okay because I feel like there was land but then it was sold but this was connected into your mom's side of the mm -hmm. family was she a homemaker did you know oh, yeah. anything about her because that's I what she shows home. me okay okay because yeah. <laughs> okay. she's like I'm at home I'm yeah. running a household I'm a homemaker um, this is my job like this is what she does and she's very proud she shows me her in an apron so mm -hmm. does she wear an apron all the time <laughs> yep because she shows me like I'm in my apron I'm managing this house and she knew you know there's a garden she talks about oh, yeah. did, they, did they garden oh, because sure. <laughs> there's like this big garden and that was what she did and I feel like too she cans or she takes fruits and vegetables and cans them or works with them cooking that kind of stuff 
Um, and she also shows me the house. Did it have a cellar? Yes. Okay, because I'm going down wood steps into a cellar, and it's kind of that standard. I see this a lot generationally, like the cellar where um, you're canning stuff, there's shelves, and there's mm -hmm. canned goods the and pantry. things like that. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's like, but it's in the basement. Right. Yeah. So she talks about that, and then she shows me these old um, tin pie pans. Okay. So I don't know if you remember those things, but it's like that old, they're tin pie pans is what she says, or she had a special kind of pie pan or something that she would cook with that was like um, a tin or, but she says they're tin. That's the word she's using. Okay. So I, again, I don't know if you can validate that, but she's, she's showing me that, but she's with you often. She just wants you to know um, she's very proud of you. There's a strong lineage with these women, like mm -hmm. super strong. Your mom's super strong. Um, your aunt's talking to me. What's her first name again? Arlene. Arlene. Okay, so one of the things that Arlene talks about is you having more confidence. They're saying that they're trying to really kind of assist you with your female energy okay. in terms of allowing yourself to be sensitive, allowing yourself to be vulnerable allowing yourself to really get soft when you need to and as women i think sometimes we don't like to feel that because it right. can be super uncomfortable right. does that make sense to you yeah, oh, 100%. yeah. Yes. and so she just talks about like allowing yourself to be soft and to be vulnerable and that she says that sometimes you feel like you need to be strong all the time and you mm -hmm. don't have to be she's got you she's got the kids she's got the grandkids like mm -hmm. everybody's in, animals everything's included in all of that mm -hmm. and it's almost like she just has this blanket of energy that she puts around you're not her only child correct no. okay because she makes me feel like i have more i have more so she yeah. has other kids that she that she does spend time with and that she connects into are there three uh no just me and my brother. Okay, so there's two. Was yeah. there a child that was lost or was there a miscarriage at some point? Me, me and my first wife, we had a baby that was stillborn. And she has this child. And then my current wife, we had, she had a miscarriage. Okay, because I feel like yeah. there's energy, child energy, yeah. and your mom's like, I have the kids. I have the kids. So she wants you to know, especially the child that came in and made it, like, came in for the stillborn child mm -hmm. that's the i mean i feel the miscarriage energy too because it is an energy but mm -hmm. it's a different kind of energy yep. than when baby comes in and then leaves very quickly and mm -hmm. so she just wants you to find peace around that knowing that those things have their own reasonings for happening mm -hmm. um and so sometimes those souls just aren't ready to incarnate yep. it doesn't mean that anybody did anything wrong it just means that those things they happen as you mm -hmm. know so your mom just wants she's like it's almost like she wants to put peace around your heart concerning this situation okay i have your dad stepping in was he quiet uh he's a little bit more low-key he's he's low-key but he can fire the up the family right but, but he's fired up. He could be a yeah. very loud person. Yeah, yes. he, that's what he shows me. He's like, I can get fired up in other situations, yeah. is what he says. And what's his first name? Robert. Okay. Mediums make for compelling TV. Most people have seen at least one of them bring someone to tears with messages from dead loved ones like this. Did you lose your husband, ma'am? Your husband wants to thank you for caring for him and allowing him to leave the physical world with dignity and grace. While watching people tear up can seem incredible, the techniques that psychics use to achieve those moments are significantly less incredible, because there are two basic techniques that psychics tend to use. The first is called cold reading. It's basically taking high probability guesses, like I'm sensing a loved one who had problems in the chest area, or is there a J or an M in a loved one's name? Is there a D, like a Daniel? David, like there's a big D. So for me, it's initials. It's usually um, months of the year, like December being important. Who is the MR name? Mark, Mary, Marie. They don't have to be passed. They could be here in the physical world. Either Maureen, Marianne. There's an M name. Where's the M connection to? Did anybody have either a brain tumor, brain aneurysm, or a, a cerebral, cerebral hemorrhage? 
Not connected to him, not connected to you. Somebody behind you had that. Oh, someone behind her had that. Nice save, buddy. Interestingly, it often turns out that a psychic's wrong guess is just energy from somewhere else in the room. A room, incidentally, that is very likely to have someone who had one of the problems he just listed. Is there a Brian Flanagan or O'Flynn or, or O'Sullivan or O'Reilly or some type of... Who's passed? Brian O'something, Flanagan, Sullivan, something like that? What are you doing? <laughs> Brian O'Flanagan or O'Flynn or O'something, you're supposed to be speaking directly to people's dead relatives, not trying to guess the name of the Lucky Charms mascot. Let's pick up John Edwards' reading with the family of Brian O'something as he doubles down on a bad guess. I'm kind of getting the feeling of not liking the older female. Tell me that you didn't like your his father's mother, then I would understand that. Oh, you got the wrong Brian then. <laughs> I don't think I do. I'm gonna tell you what they're showing me. And if he's calling your mother a bitch, I'm gonna pass it on. Say what you want about John Edward. He's sticking to his guns there. None of that maybe this bitch energy is coming from somewhere else in the room nonsense this time. A few years ago, Tyler Henry went on the Today Show to do a reading of one of their anchors. There's a reference to fishing, but he's talking about being spoken out loud too. Maybe Tyler Henry genuinely accessed the afterlife, an action which would fundamentally change our understanding of everything on Earth. Or maybe he just Googled Matt Lauer dad and hit the fucking jackpot. Where is the downside in telling people their grandmother loved them? But I would argue that at best, it is reckless for a stranger to take a stab at ventriloquizing the dead. Loss is complicated and mourning doesn't look the same for everyone. But at worst, when psychic abilities are presented as authentic, it emboldens a vast underworld of unscrupulous vultures. John and Joanne Lowitzer have been searching for their 17-year-old daughter, Allie, since she vanished last year. But when the case made national news... <laughs> The Houston parents say they became inundated with calls from so-called psychic detectives. They say some even showed up at their front door, promising their psychic visions could help bring Allie home. I would watch her every time she was on Montel, and i say, I wish my mom would go in there. And then she could tell my mom that I was alive and that I'm okay. She's... But Sylvia Brown breaks Luana's hope. I just hate that she's not alive, honey. I just broke down crying because I couldn't believe she said that. So when a tragedy happens, let's say a murder, spirit of the person who was murdered is there, could that spirit potentially tell you who did it? They will acknowledge maybe the relationship, um, but um, never will call someone out on a name. I only want messages that are going to help someone through the healing process. Our producer met her at a coffee shop, saying she wants to know what happened to Matthew, the 10-year-old boy in this photo. <sighs> They're saying he's not and then she claims she is connected directly with men. <laughs> but is he? Because we're pretty sure Matthew, the boy in this photo, is not wearing white or in heaven. In fact, we know he's wearing black and is alive because you're looking at him sitting in the booth right behind her. I understand you said you thought he was deceased. Yes, I believe he could be. I've got news for you. It might come as a shock, but he's very much alive. Oh, that's great. And he's actually standing right behind you right now. Oh, that's great. Good evening. Good evening. I see we are not alone. It's all right that we continue yes, with these is. answers yes, it is. that you've asked. Give us a moment. Now you have asked about your team. Mm -hmm. And if we were to describe them to you, would this be adequate? If we were to point them out, would this be adequate? Then let us do those things. Okay. Now, the first of all, you have a male as you call him, an angel standing right next to you, in front of this gentleman. He is next to you. He is not fully here yet. We would say, put your hand out, reach out, and feel the energy column. He is the one you've been sensing at night. Is this not so? Mm -hmm. You've been sensing him as well as a female. Is this not correct? That's correct. 
he is more of your guardian. She is more of wisdom, motherly energy. You feel loved by her. You feel that calmness when she's around. You feel his strength, the strength and security that he brings to your home and to you. This is not correct. Yes. She seems to come when you are feeling distraught and you are asking questions and you ask many questions for you in your head a lot lately. Mm -hmm. Is this not so? Very so. You are looking at your life and trying to analyze things and finding balance. With you, balance is difficult. Now, we will say you love your life. Mm -hmm. You know you have a good life. You mm -hmm. feel blessed. Mm -hmm. You constantly affirm this, mm -hmm. yet there's this part of you that is how long will this last? And your thoughts are not the truth, they are your thoughts. Mm -hmm. Every time you affirm that you are blessed, that you feel this blessing, you feel this energy rising up in your life, and manifestation then comes fairly easily for you. Mm -hmm. As you develop your own gifts, you are seeing past the immediacy of your life, and you're saying, I see these energy shifts within mm -hmm. them. I see the potential for disaster, and this is how you deem it mm -hmm. as a disaster, mm -hmm. whether it's financial or physical. You're worried about your own health. Mm -hmm. You have issues around your center. Is this not so? Probably. As we can see this energy here. Mm -hmm. Now we'll say much of this has to do with what is going on upstairs with you. Mm -hmm. Not all of it, however because you have been doing this pattern for quite a while. Mm. You've been trying to break this pattern. Now we're smiling because there, a third has appeared for you. He is much younger male, more energetic. He is the one who supplies you with that energy that mm. you do not know where it comes from sometimes. Often. This is what his purpose is for you. Okay. He facilitates that movement of energy within you, keeps you going, so to speak. He's not just strength, he's also love. He is the one that motivates you to stay open. You have a hard time looking in the mirror, though, and finding that love for yourself. True. Because you give into your head way too often. Yes. Still. Yes. Now, this is not a new thing. No, it's not. Letting go has been difficult for you. Letting go of the fear of the future, fear of mm -hmm. uh, financial disaster, which has been a big issue for you. Mm -hmm. But things are okay. Mm -hmm. You keep on feeling. And we say feeling, not just thinking, but you feel this. And we take and we use the word problem lightly here, for it is only a problem as you view it a problem. Mm -hmm. So imagine that the word problem does not exist. It could be an adventure, it could be a learning process, it could be something that I'm going to go through this and I'm going to be successful. Set your intent when the time comes. Do you feel this? Feel it where your concern is, mm -hmm. where the dark spot is. Mm -hmm. Say it. This is a fabulous life. When you are standing outside of yourself, and you are standing still, and you are sitting still, and you are looking at your life and your family, you see this, and you say this to yourself, but you do not use words. You feel this. Mm -hmm. Now we invite you to say this and speak it. Mm -hmm. Speak it into existence within yourself. Okay. And this is the battle that is going on here. It is judgment. Mm -hmm. It is judgment about how you think, your words, what you see. Mm -hmm. It is letting go of this. There's no more turning in on yourself. No more. Okay. You understand of what we speak. I do. Mm -hmm. As you talk to your angels each night, watch for them in the darkness. You may see things you have not seen before. We will send you some energy. Imagine it is going to the spot that we have described. You feel it when you see it in your mind. Mm -hmm. See our energies pierce that spot.
is finished. Thank you. Good, good. All of you. You find good evening. When I channel my guardian angels, I don't remember a whole lot of what happens. It's like I occupy my body and so do they. I, I couldn't tell you what they said. I do feel that their intensity when they speak, so I felt that uh, the reading was very intense for the individual and I felt that um, they were concerned with what was going on in the room because I know I saw everybody, but I don't know what they said to everybody. So my experience was that they were very high energy. I felt a lot of energy moving through me. Um, usually when I'm done channeling, I, also, I can usually tell what they've done. I know that they sent her or someone energy because I can always feel it in my body when they've done that. Um, I usually feel very good after a channeling session with someone and I usually get their feedback to see how it was because since I don't retain much of a memory of this, I didn't see anything uh, that changed the, the measurements on the millimeter. Mm -hmm. uh, we have learned in this work that just because something doesn't show on our instruments doesn't mean something did not happen right. uh, or something did happen. Um, so, you know, we want to make that clear. Sometimes in this field it's a little muddled, but uh, in terms of atmosphere or energy impacting our instruments, it did not happen. Did you feel or sense anything personally having done this kind of work in different situations before? I did not. No, I did not either. Well, I think that, you know, these kind of sessions are uh, deeply personal um, and it's important to respect them. Um, you know, we want, what do I want? Um, I would hope that people would, would benefit from these sessions with a medium or with a channeler or um, that if something doesn't show up on instruments and can't be measured, it shouldn't make it any less important for them. You are usually called in for to check out ghost sightings or haunted houses or something? Is Correct. That, is really yeah. that is our main work, yes. Yeah. Um, what uh, do you usually notice in those kinds of situations? Is it strictly whatever you find on the, on the gadgets that you got or have you noticed anything personally um, in any of the, the encounters that you had? We have, one of our main works is to measure, mm -hmm. to do our best to measure if something is there. So whether it's with cameras, whether it's with the K2s, whether it's temperature, mm -hmm. um, so and we record that. Um, personally, in these last 10, 11 years that I've been doing this, physically, you know, a physical sensation, I haven't had any except for one right. that we had recently um, out west in a home we went to. Um, that's one time out of 11 years. Yeah. So, have I been in touch with something that our instruments were giving us feedback that something was happening? Yes, uh, quite a few times. I was super excited to have this opportunity to do readings uh, with some people and also see what kind of level measurements would have come out of this. Um, so it'll be interesting to see the feedback we get when they analyze all the data and information. But whenever I do a reading, it's always an honor. Um, I feel so incredibly blessed to be able to tap into this energy and to really help people on their life path because I feel like spirit, the bottom line in being a medium is that it's that spirit energy that wants us to know how much we're loved and how much we're looked after and supported and that we're never alone in this journey. And when they come in to give us insights on how to better evolve as a soul and how to better manage our lives, it's just, it's amazing to see. And sometimes um, they can tell us some really honest information and I think that makes us all think. But I also think that when a parent comes in and apologizes or acknowledges that there were some things in life that they could have done differently that it's so incredibly healing 
for both the spirit on the other side, that, that loved one on the other side, but also for the person sitting here receiving the reading. So I thought it was great. We got some great validations, which is always my job, right, to hear things and to um, get some good validations, but also to help people understand that they're not alone and that we are supported and maybe even get some some information and advice on how to live a more fulfilled and joyful life. Did you feel any difference at all with the fact that, you know, you're on camera? Well, we had done you sure. on camera before, mm -hmm. but now we also have a research team here clicking away with their stuff. I had an awareness that there were people in the room, but my goal was to really focus in on the client and make sure that I was tapping in and not get distracted. And I think Spirit really helped me with that tonight because I was a little nervous coming in. Um, but they really came through very um, clearly for me. So I was able to, like any other reading, see and hear things the way I needed to so that I could deliver those messages. So I, I knew they were there, but it wasn't an, um, too much of a distraction at all. I was more curious. I wanted to ask, like, did the levels just go up? Because I could see, you know, um, you know, a loved one or a family member, like with Steve, his mom and dad were on both sides of him. And so it's like, you know, can you see or did something change because of that? But this is very high vibrational energy. This is what I, I work in energy of love and light, of high vibration. So I'm curious to see how that impacts the readings as well. There will always be people who feel an urge to reach out to psychics in their time of need. So if you or someone you know is one of them, I may have a small way to help. The next guest is a Staten Island psychic and author of the book, These Freaking Spirits, let me tell you. Please welcome Wanda Jo Oliver. When did you first realize that you had incredible psychic abilities? Oh, well, it was right after I saw a thing on TV about how much money psychics can make. And some I was like, oh, me too. I understand that you've graciously offered to give our viewers psychic readings for free. Is that mm -hmm. right? Okay, they want me to acknowledge an M connection. That could mean Mark or Mary or, or Megan. It could be someone who's passed or still alive. It also doesn't have to be a name. It could be any word that starts with M or has an M somewhere in it. Maybe maybe museum or hamper. It, it could be an upside down M like a W or a sideways M like a three or an E. Anyway, that person, he or she wants me to tell you that the time you had together was really special to him or her. What we need to understand is that mediumship specifically is an amazing gift and that there are people that have come into this life to be able to share that so that we can help others understand that again this is not the end and that our loved ones stay with us and they know what's going on in our lives with our families, with our loved ones, and that they're there to help and assist us if we ask them. Every medium has a different style, every medium has a different way of bringing forth messages, and there's no really right or wrong, it's what resonates for the client, because my style is the way that my style is, and for a lot of people, that's great. There might be some that don't prefer that and maybe prefer a different kind of mediumship style. We don't, all don't do it the same way it doesn't mean that there's someone better than the other. But I do encourage people to work with mediums that really are of in a space of high vibration, they work with integrity, that they are honest and to really trust your instincts and go to someone that you know and feel good about. Referrals are always a great way to get connected with good mediums, but there's a lot of really great mediums out there and I think it's becoming definitely more mainstream and accepted. Spirit communication currently lies in the realm of faith, as does religion, science being based on empirical evidence gathered by the five senses. A middle ground must be somehow reached between faith and science in order to understand better the world we live in. That means faith-based systems must be open to all manner of beliefs and not be simply restricted to their own rules. If this program advocates anything, it is that more research needs to be done within this field to include measuring effects from all human activity and its possible interaction with something beyond the physical, meaning studies taken from airports, subways, hospitals, sporting events, or on the battlefield. In fact, anywhere humans habitate, and not just in the comfort of a wellness center. 
This involves a wider branch of investigation and more funding from somewhere. If we are capable of communicating between dimensions, then it seems a pretty important area of research and should not be left strictly to the individual, no matter how well-meaning and trained. Without that, we are likely to expose ourselves to more of this. Oh, wait, wait, I'm getting a voice through for someone at home. Hold on. Your grandmother's a bitch!